What's happening, everybody? Welcome, you're listening, or maybe watching, to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Andrew is That's here. Me. That's me. Here I am. And today's subject is how much injury is okay. We're going to talk about it. We're going to figure it out for ourselves and give you some thoughts on how to determine what's an acceptable amount of injury. Because you know what? We do traditional martial arts and we get banged up. Yep, absolutely. It happens. Yep, and it will continue to happen. Most likely. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, a couple things to keep in mind. If you want to help us out, because putting these shows together costs money, not a lot, as you can see from this studio, but some, <laughs> there's stuff on the back end that costs more money, for sure. Uh, the best thing that you can do is go to whistlekick.com, use the code podcast15, pick up a shirt or something, and uh, help us out that way. You could also leave a review, buy a book on Amazon, you could tell people about the show, maybe share an episode on your social media, you can follow us on social media. We've also got a Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And on our Patreon, we do exclusive content that you're not going to find anywhere else. It starts at two bucks a month, and it goes up from there. We have people at every tier. We recently had someone jump in, believe it or not, at the $100 a month tier. Yep. And there's some really cool stuff that that person's getting. On, and on top of that, you get free merch. Yeah. At every tier, you're getting free stuff. Free stickers, free posters, free t-shirts, sweatshirts, and... It's going to rotate, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not like you're going to get the same stuff over and over again. But go to patreon.com slash whistlekick. Check it out. All the details are there. Very rarely does someone dial back or stop pledging. So we're doing something right. So. Okay. Injury. Yes. How much of it can we have? can we take? None. Done. All, All right. Podcast over. Thanks for watching. No, I... <laughs> One of the things that we've talked about, especially when we're talking about self-defense, is this continuum about reality of training mm -hmm. versus safety. And actually, we did an episode, and I don't remember when it was, it was a few years ago, where I talked about kind of balancing this continuum of safety versus realism. Do you remember? Does that ring a bell? I, I doesn't. Okay. It was certainly a Thursday episode. Because let's take the two extremes. If we do the safest training we can it's not going to be the most effective. Hmm. You know, there's there's no contact. Yep. In yep. fact, I don't know about you, but I've hurt myself solo training. You know, like you kick wrong and you're like, ow, oh, that leg's <laughs> not going to work for a day or two, right? Like, yep. so injury can happen in all kinds of ways. There's no such thing as completely safe training. But then the other end of the spectrum, if it's just full out all the time, contact, no padding. Eye gouges. Eye gouges, and you can get kicked in the back of the knee at any time in the middle of class. You're not going to be able to progress because you'll be constantly broken. Yep, yep. So I think we can agree the extremes suck. So we're talking about something in the middle. We're in the middle and helping you determine what's appropriate for you. Now, if you're an instructor, you've got a burden to shoulder there. And I think that you determine a bit what you think is appropriate for your students and help get them there knowing that there is no one size fits all. Yeah. And you know, everyone's different for sure. Everyone is different. You're going to have people who want to go harder, who want to go softer. And that's one of the really difficult responsibilities of an instructor is, is helping people get the training they need, even if it's not quite what they want mm. and finding that balance. So let's put that aside because I think this is more of a philosophical experiment than a, a full-on practical one. Yeah. How you take what we're discussing and implement it is going to be entirely up to you. What are the factors that go into determining how much is okay? Well, I think the first thing to understand is that injury is going to happen. Yes. Like, there's, there, it, it is inevitable. Um, if you are going to train for any length of time, some level of injury is going to happen, whether it's uh, just a, a sprained ankle because you came down on it wrong or whatever, or, you know, kicking someone and your foot hit their shin in just the wrong way. Like, injury is going to happen, I think. And, and knowing that from the outset is important, I think. Yes. I, I think if you're not going to accept the, not just the possibility, but the overtime inevitability the, of yeah. injury, 
you're probably not cut out for martial arts. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, because again, those injuries aren't always obvious. They don't always happen because someone was negligent. Sometimes mm-hmm. it just happens. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes your your body was banged up from you know mowing the lawn and that coupled with three or four other things that you weren't thinking about mm-hmm. and then you step out on the floor and your warm-up's not quite adequate yeah and you stack all those factors and next thing you know you've thrown your back out exactly which leads to a discussion on to me there's two kinds of injuries there's an mm. active injury and a passive injury talk about that the, well the active injury being I did something and something immediately happened. Mm. Uh, I, I came down on my foot wrong and I broke a toe. Yep. Or, uh, you know, so he kicked me and I came here and I got like, oh, that really hurt my mm. arm, right? Uh, broke a finger doing some jujitsu technique and boom, uh, and, and the instructor broke a finger on me. Like, that's an active injury. Uh, to me, a passive injury would be I left class feeling pretty good. But then I woke up the next day and it's like, mm. whoa, like my back is thrown out and it was fine yeah. before, you know, those things that, that you don't necessarily realize at the time. Immediate versus later. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, maybe, I'm maybe active and passive isn't the right adjective to use, but that's the two types of injuries that I see. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. So if we, if we've got that, it's likely that if we're going to slice it that way, that the passive ones mm-hmm. may not be ones that we can discuss as cleanly. I would agree. Yep. Because I think a lot of that's going to be circumstantial and personal driven. Yep. You know, a, a good example between a whole bunch of core work, at karate last week, mm-hmm. being on the motorcycle for a week. I rented my car out. Made a few hundred bucks. It's a good deal. Uh, Working in the yard a bunch, like my low back is really lit up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I trained last night, I was very careful about what I did. Yeah. Because I know something could happen. So that's not the stuff that we're talking about. Because if I stepped into class Mm -hmm. and I let my ego get the best of me and I went hard and I came out of class or even in the middle of class, my back seized up and went into spasm. Is that a result of the training? Mm, probably not no no that's a result of all the other stuff that was just the final straw so let's talk about the the active Active. the immediate Mm -hmm. the acute sorts of injuries if we're talking about that continuum safe real everybody's going to have a different place on there because their goals are different Mm -hmm. and so i think that's the first thing to determine the why why are you training if you're training for fitness You want to stay as close to safe as possible because the more injured you get, the less time you're going to spend training and thus your fitness goals are going to be on hold more than they're off hold. Off hold, yep. And you're going to sit there and be like, man, I am not moving in the direction I wanted to move. (laughs) This is not working for me. As as your legs propped up, (laughs) broken off, you're in the hospital, you're like, I am not getting fitter right now, right? But if your goal is realistic training, mm. and you know we, we talked about in a another episode, one that we just recorded, I don't know the order that we're doing these, but we talked on another episode about the ability to take a shot and that being an important part for some people of mm-hmm. learning mm-hmm. how to conduct themselves in a self-defense situation. You know, you get rocked in the head being able to shake that off. Yeah. That's something that someone who's training to be the most effective in a street confrontation or a competition as possible mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really should be learning, but not something I'm going to want, you know, you know, a typical 12 year old yeah. to go through. But let's take it to the extreme. Let's say a broken arm. Yeah. I, you know, even if I am training to be serious in the street or a competition or whatever, I don't want a broken arm. And I, and I would make the argument that having a broken arm doesn't help me with that. It doesn't help me right. with my train. It doesn't help me get ready for, the street or the cul-de-sac or whatever, you know, or the, the or the competition. Having a broken arm puts me in the, mm. the worst position. So I think there are two things that we might be able to say at this point, and we actually may be honing in on, it, on an answer yeah. much faster than I was anticipating. Training that gives you the context for the circumstances in which you want to utilize your training. Mm-hmm. 
self-defense, competition, life, right? If you have to break that continuity of training, well, sorry, that was the other piece. A little tired. Context. If it gives you context that you can use or experience or understanding or whatever word goes in there, then it is good. If it is giving you context that is beyond what you need, it is beyond mm -hmm. the threshold that is dictated really by your why yep, yep. on this continuum, if I'm training for fitness and I'm constantly coming home bruised, mm -hmm. that's a sign that I'm going too far. Yeah. Now, maybe I'm okay with that, but those dots don't really connect. Correct. Right? Yep. And then the other piece is, does the injury force you to stop training in a way that gives you that context? Exactly. Like a broken arm for someone who wants to do a competition. Right. But let's let's take... Because I think it's easier to get far down the scale mm -hmm. and, and, and walk it back. So if we take the example of the person who is training for street defense, you know, they, they're, they're rah, rah, rah about, you know, I want to be a, a, a BAMF when I'm out there mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I want to be as ready as possible. Getting banged up, bruised up makes sense. Yep. Bruises. Okay. But if you break your arm and then you have to skip a couple weeks of training. Mm-hmm. That's too far. Now, that same person, if they end up with a, let's say, a sprained finger or a broken finger, may still be able to train. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. May be fine with training. You know what? I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to splint it. And when I come into class, I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to put a pad on it because, you know, it's entirely possible that I end up on the street and something happens and I lose use of this hand. So I want to be able to mm -hmm. explore training, give myself context, experience yep. Yep. for training while that hand is out of commission. Yeah, I could see that. Okay. Now that's kind of an extreme. Mm -hmm. Fitness is kind of an extreme in the other way for what most people, most people have a multifaceted why. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody that trains for one specific reason. I don't either. So let's take someone who's more in the middle. This is probably your closer to average martial artist, probably someone like you and I. Mm -hmm. Community, self-defense... Uh, personal development, fitness, you know, they're, they're checking a bunch of boxes. They might rearrange them in a different order yeah, than, yeah. than you. I'm sure you and I have slightly different priorities when we train. The point at which injury is too much for me, honestly, the number one thing I, I think for me is is when it, it is the reason I'm injured. Am I, I am, if someone hits me too hard, and I come away with like a, you know, I'm banged up. Like let's say we clash shins. Yep. yep. If we clash shins because we're training hard, because we're trying to help each other grow, I'm okay with that. And I'll yep. probably come back to class. Yeah. If we clash there's, shins. Because there's a mutual understanding. Yeah. That's what it is. If yep. we clash shins because that person was being arrogant or not following, not doing the drill the way we were supposed to, and now I'm hurt. I'm not okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would agree, and and I think it's important to understand that accidents happen. The person yep. was doing the drill wrong, yep. maybe because they didn't understand it. Sure. And they did it once. They get corrected. They don't do it again. That's great. Yep. But if you have someone in class who is constantly, over and over and over again, having these types of situations come up, that's a problem. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think I think that if we keep going down this line, I think this is too much of a tangent. Because we're not talking about why, yeah. We're talking about how much. And yeah, I so, think I think we should keep it keep it tight. I I, I think for me that the so when if we when we get into the the yeah. the active injuries, I think to me it comes down to the two Bs: bruises and breaks. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean sprains. I guess bruises, breaks, and sprains. BBS. That's what we got. Okay. Um, breaks, in my opinion, with rare exception are not acceptable. I don't think anyone should be breaking a bone right. in class. Um, fingers and toes, perhaps, it, that can happen. It's going to happen inevitably. But, but if it's a regular occurrence, that's a problem. That, that leads to an issue. If it's an occasional 
it happens once every few years. Uh, okay, you know it yeah. does. It does happen. I, I get that. But I don't know of anyone that has broken a leg or an arm in class. And I can't think of a scenario where that would be okay. Right. Right. We could talk about why injuries occur. And, and maybe we should, we should unpack that a, a little bit. Injuries occur when, in my opinion, the progression of whatever's being done, whatever drill is happening, when those steps are taken too quickly. Mm. Yeah. Either, you know, you jump right in, nobody's sparred in six months, and everybody's put back together, all right, let's spar, at whatever level of intensity yeah. people were used to sparring pre those six months. Or you're rushing someone's uh, participation in that drill. So you can, yeah. you can rush things. So there, there's there's a why. I think that that often happens. But I keep coming back to the more I'm thinking about this, the more we're talking about this, it comes down to does that injury limit something that is important to me? Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it in context of training, but I think we need to talk about it outside training, you know, because we might train an hour or two a day. What about the other 22, 23 hours? If my training limits my lifestyle, that's not okay. You get examples where, you know, people end up with bruises on their face. You know, I, I've known a number of martial artists oh, yeah. who have uh, jokingly talked about interventions at work because people thought they were in abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Yeah, I just, you know, had a, had a tough martial arts class. But are you sure? <laughs> right? Because if people don't train, they don't necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. understand that. But I think that it... It all comes down to the why and drawing those limits and knowing what your limits are and being flexible with that limit appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's how that injury impacts your life. If you break a leg and you can't walk and your job involves walking, <laughs> you know, maybe you're a, a server at a restaurant and you break your leg, that's a big deal. Yeah. That's a bigger deal than if you break your leg and you're a computer analyst. Yeah, and, and you, you sit at a desk mm -hmm. for your job. Not that it should happen for either, but I would guess if we were to ask the two individuals to rate the impact of that injury on their lives, mm -hmm. they would the, be the server's going to have a, a stronger response yeah. than the analyst. So there's no one size fits all, like everything else that we talk about. It's true. It's definitely different, and I and it's it's important for you as a martial artist to think about what is mm -hmm. what is acceptable for yourself. Yeah, you know, having those under, having that understanding, having clear boundaries, being willing to move slower than those around you, being willing to have difficult conversations with instructors and, and fellow students, hey, I'm not comfortable with this intensity. I'm not comfortable with this speed. And make it about you. You know, it's not about them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, instead of saying, you're going too hard, I'm not comfortable with my ability yeah. to respond. I'm not ready for that. Yep. yep. And, and if you're in, a, in an environment where that doesn't fly, maybe you have a conversation, a private conversation with the instructor. Mm -hmm. And if they say, you know what? Tough. Maybe you find a new school. Yeah. I mean, if that's what it... If, because you, only you can determine your lines. Exactly. And and if, if they are not comfortable with your level and your line, that's an issue. Doesn't mean it's wrong. No, absolutely. It just means that your why and your comfort level, your determination of where you are on this damage level, this injury spectrum may not line up with where you're training. Mm -hmm. I've been at schools like this. I have been at schools that are, they just, they just want to bang. All right. You know, it, it's almost like warm up and basics. You know, people are like, all right. When do we get to hit each other? <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, it remind the best analogy in the original Lion King, the hyenas. Oh yeah. They're like, yep. 
to, until we get to eat now, right? <laughs> and and then it comes time to grab a partner, and they're just like, all right, boom. And the instructor doesn't even say go, and they're just smashing yeah. each other. Yeah. I don't like that environment. That's not where I want to be. If you've spent you know, more than a few episodes with this show, you know, I like to think about stuff. I like mm. to contemplate. I like to move slowly. I like to find my own way. And yeah, I, I can get out there. I can, you know, I can, I can smash. Yeah. But not with the best of them, but I can, you know, but, and I'm okay. thinking, think about this stuff is good. And you know? knowing that it's not what I want every class because I know my body needs to recover. And I'm mm-hmm. also one of the first people to go, oh, nope, we're not going there. Uh, you just hook kick me in the back of the head and it hurt and we're done. Because if you do a second one, you know, now we're stacking uh, TBIs. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I know it sounds like I'm talking like I've had a number of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just tired. My so apologies. But it's not worth it. Yeah. No. It's not worth it to me. And I can't say it, it is or is not for anyone else. Yep. For me, bruises are okay. Yep. Breaks are bad. Yep. I would agree. Yeah. And not bruises every class. But, you know, in our school, we do, uh, you know, Japanese kotikitai, body mm-hmm. conditioning. So, you know, hitting arms and, yep. you know, lightly kicking legs. Um, and it's, you know, I, I may occasionally get a bruise. That's okay. But we don't do them every class either. Right. Well, human, human adaptation comes through not intensity every once in a while. Yeah. But just going a little bit more than what you were doing mm-hmm. frequently. That's how progress happens in yep. everything. If you want to go really deep on that, read all the science in the Flex program mm-hmm. that's available for free. <laughs> all right, we got anything else you should add? No, we're okay. good. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Feedback. Give us some feedback. If you have feedback, uh, if you have stories that illustrate this that you wouldn't mind sharing, this is a good opportunity. Watch for when we post this. And actually, if you're watching it, it's already been posted <laughs> in the Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes Facebook group. You can post there. And I mentioned the Flex program. We also have a strength and conditioning program. We have a speed program. Uh, we have a, a conditioning. conditioning program. And kind of like a cardio conditioning. No, that's a lame way to put it. Anyway, go to whistlekickprograms.com. You can see all about the programs. They're less expensive than you think. Flex is free. There's a bundle. We just rolled out new logos for them. We even renamed them. We're in the process of rebranding those programs because they're super cool and uh, they deserve some attention. Other things that deserve some attention from you, from us for you, our Patreon, whistlekick.com, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, our newsletter, our social media, the books that we have on Amazon, Marshall Journal. We don't talk about Marshall Journal very often. There's a ton of stuff out there. If you are a martial artist, if you love martial arts, you, I don't know that you're going to find a company that is working harder to bring you martial arts stuff because we love martial arts and we want to help you. We want to enable your love of martial arts. We want to, we want to get you hooked. Give you access to everything. Yeah. yeah. Cause you know what? I believe that if people train, they become better versions of themselves. And thus, if you're still training, you're still getting better. Okay. If you want to reach out, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's it for now. Until next time, train Train hard, hard, smile, smile, and have have a great great day. day.